first off though to Darwin, which is in the middle of a political crisis, precipitated by a battle over its future as a tropical city. The Speaker of the Territory Parliament, Kezia Purik, has resigned from the ruling party over planning decisions, and that's plunged the NT into minority government. Jane Barden reports. It's a tropical city with a laid-back lifestyle. Uh, it was the sense of living in a village with the amenities of a city, uh, which is always an analogy I've liked. And uh, so you have things like the entertainment centre and um, other big facilities, the convention centre and so on, that are all, you know, pretty good standard. And um, But there's uh, an ease of getting about, um, a laid-back quality. A city that boasts a unique urban landscape designed to keep Darwinites relaxed and comfortable. Well, you can see we've got an enormous number of louvers, uh, 468 of them, but they're open. There's a seamlessness between inside and outside. Lawyer Tom Pauling moved from Sydney to Darwin in 1970. He served as the Northern Territory's administrator for five years until 2011. He loves the charm of this city and the life it offers. Well, I think the sort of house that this is and the sort of garden this is exemplify what, what tropical living is about. And tropical living isn't about living in concrete boxes. Tom Pauling thought he'd left those concrete boxes of the southern cities behind. But now this distinctive Darwin landscape is about to be replaced by high-rise housing. Once you start getting rid of the tropical character, there's really no allure, um, no reason why you'd want to come here. The Northern Territory government says there's a critical affordable housing shortage in Darwin and there's a need to provide high-rise apartments in existing suburbs. We came to government committing to do something about the cost of living. Uh, land release and allowing uh, development to occur uh, is a big part of uh, reducing the cost of living in the Northern Territory. The developers agree, arguing the density of some suburbs must be increased to meet demand. There is a trend towards this uh, inner city or close to CBD living and so there's a contribution because people can actually afford to live there too. If they buy an apartment, it's affordable. If they were to buy an established house, it's probably not affordable. Look, clearly this is a public lynching. Uh, some people are... <laughs> well, well, what is it? The government's plans have galvanised residents' groups, unhappy with plans to build up. Minister. What are you thinking? Why would two eight storeys, possibly nine storeys building, fit in this, um, on this block? This is poorly uh, zoned land. Uh, it it's goes back uh, more than 20 years uh, to a time when, uh, uh, well, where contemporary needs don't meet the needs of the times. And many residents believe that the high-rise apartments have more to do with keeping developers happy. We have, over the 30 years that I can remember, so many um, master plans, and really they all say the same thing, that we want to maintain our tropical lifestyle. And it shouldn't be overridden by a few developers wanting to make money. I don't believe uh, that is, holds any water at all, and if people have evidence of that, I'd, I'd love to see it. But one government MP says she may have that evidence. Casey Apurek's mother was approached to sell her land before the government changed planning rules to allow subdivision into smaller house blocks. Now she wants an ICAC style body to be established to investigate the government's dealings with developers. People coming in and buying up land, that's fine, but what discussions have they had with government agencies or even a minister's office? And that's what people don't know so naturally they're suspicious. I'm certainly not aware of uh, government, uh, you know, people in the public service uh, uh, or ministers talking to developers about uh, what they may or may not be able to develop. Kezia Purik has now made good in her threat to resign from the country Liberals government, leaving it in a minority position. I want to advise that this morning I emailed the country Liberals president and the chief minister to advise them that I am resigning from the party. Uh, there's no information as to how the Minister arrives at a decision, none. Um, and as you know, I had to resort myself to using FOI to try and get information out of the government regards some planning and development in my electorate, which I'm still working on. 
um, and I haven't got yet. So um, why, why is there such a problem? You know, but if that's what I have to do to support my constituents, that's what I do. Is it time that the minister who's in charge of that portfolio, Dave Tolner, resigns? Uh, hmm, that's a good question. Um, Thank you. I, <laughs> Kezia Purick wants new urban centres with their high density living to be constructed in a new satellite city up to 100 kilometres away. That's where the planning should be starting now. Uh, previous government did undertake a whole lot of preliminary um, baseline studies. Where's that work gone? It's just not sustainable to go further and further out of Darwin. We're on a peninsula. It's a long commute, it's expensive, there are uh, environmental uh, ramifications. Tom Pauling still thinks new out-of-town developments are preferable to changing Darwin. Densification is a much cheaper option because the services are already there. But you, you must understand where it is that you're trying to develop and it's Darwin, it's not anywhere else. We planted all of it. Um, there was just two friends of panny trees when we first arrived. He's still hoping the right balance can be found. We've got to try and get a, some sort of consensus about what makes Darwin unique. What is the essence of Darwin? Then you need to use that as a lens to say, would this decision to densify or not um, protect that character, enhance that character or destroy it?